is good soil. G'day, I'm Craig and this is Matchstick and this is episode two of how to grow your food from scratch and this episode is all going to be about soil, the foundations of growing food. So if you can grow soil, you can grow food. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can start building and growing your own soil right now at home, just using kitchen scraps, the waste around your house, composting it down into chocolate goodness. So what is soil made of? Let's put it in perspective of the forest. That's our great analogy, really, isn't it? The forest. Because that's what we're trying to work towards, Pre recreate the most productive place in nature. Which happens to be a forest. So what makes a forest so productive? Microbiologists have found just in a spoonful of forest soil, you have over a billion bacteria and fungi. So majority of soil is actually life. And that's what actually will be growing your plants. So as a basic understanding of how that biology feeds your plants, as your plant grows and it's photosynthesizing, at the same time, your plant is actually producing sugars in the soil, attracting certain bacteria and fungi that will release minerals within sand, stone, things that your plants can't normally soak up minerals from, and it makes it soluble for them to eat. So the more life you can create in your soil, the better your plants will grow, the more resistant they're gonna to be to pests and disease, and you're gonna have real tasty treats for dinner. So how does nature compost? At the end of summer, everything has grown wildly. As all the leaves and all the plants start breaking down and turning brown, they end up covering all the soil. And then as it rains in winter, it ends up soaking all that dry matter, which then turns into food for all the microorganisms in the soil, including your worms, Mr. Wiggles. And then comes spring, the sun comes back out, everything's blooming. And one of the reasons it does is because all that energy gets stored back in the soil to rich nutrients again. So that's basically what we're going to be doing with a cold compost. We're using those same methods that nature does, create her soil in our own soil bins. So we can start growing our own food for free. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can start building and growing your own biology right now, today, and that's going to turn into soil, organisms, food. All right, let's get growing. So here I am at our cold compost section in the backyard. Uh, we've got a few bins going on. Two actually, well one's active, the other ones are dormant. And by dormant, I mean that we're not using them yet. But um, what these are, are actually cold composts. And you're like, what? What's a cold compost? Why is it cold? Good question, everyone. Great question. Cold is basically what it says. It doesn't have a high temperature. It decomposes over time. Basically, it's the same as leaf litter might decompose on the forest floor. So what we're doing with a cold compost is we're kind of recreating that scenario by adding some materials that you find in nature so you can get the microbes growing, decomposes fast, doesn't smell, and creates soil. Basically, it's gonna be the easiest way 
for you to be able to get your scraps in your kitchen, put them in this bin and turn them into soil. So what do you need to build your compost pile? Very good question everyone. Uh, I love them, they keep coming in and they're great questions. So you're gonna need two large bins, two composting bins, or a one meter area of room. And you're gonna need a small bin for your kitchen. And I would suggest also getting a extra bin for inside as your recycling bin. But this one's gonna be only paper and cardboard. You're gonna need water, air, nitrogen material and carbon material. You're like, what? What is those things? Great question again. What is carbon? So carbon is basically anything that was alive, like a tree, plant, that is now turned brown. So it could be dried old leaves, sawdust, grass that's been dry and brown, straw, and even cardboard and paper in your house. So all this stuff is high in carbon and that's one of the ingredients I'm gonna be using for the cold compost. And the other one is nitrogen. What is nitrogen? Another great question. Nitrogen is basically all your living stuff. So if it's green, if it's a plant, nitrogen. Even manure from animals, that's really high in nitrogen. They can all go into your bin. So we've got a few bins hanging around here. We've been lucky enough, we inherited these bins from my bro, um, which makes things convenient, I must say. A bin makes it convenient. It makes it contained. You can build it up, stack it high, and you can even put a little retic in there, which we'll show you. But if you don't have a bin, you can still cold compost. And what you would do is put grass or finer mulching material over the top as you build it up because all the microbes, remember we're building microbes, they don't like sunlight. So by putting a light mulch on top, then they will be happy. The microbes will be very happy. So don't need a bin. So the first thing you wanna do is if you're creating a cold compost or any compost, is to figure out where you wanna put it. You wanna find a place that's gonna be out of the weather so it's not gonna be in direct sunlight, not getting drenched with rain, and you're gonna need water nearby to your compost pile, and it needs to be close to the house so it's convenient for you to visit every second day. Another option is if you're in the southern hemisphere, find a south side of your house, and if you're in the northern hemisphere, put it on the northern side, and you'll get a lot more shade. So there's a couple of reasons I've put it out here. One. It's only getting the morning sun. Two, this is basically free fertilizer. So as this decomposes down, fruits are gonna grow. We don't have to come out here. We don't have to fertilize. Don't have to lift a finger. So if you're like me and you're a lazy gardener, why not? So just some quick tips for you before you uh, get outside and start doing your composting. Okay, so we've got our spot. We know we're gonna put our compost bin. Now let's go into the kitchen and start collecting our scraps. So you wanna grab your small bin and you wanna put that somewhere on your kitchen bench that's easy to get to, easy to open, especially when you're cutting up your veggies. You can use anything basically that's just gonna stop flies to get in. So choose a bin with a lid or some kind of mechanism some kind of cool mechanism. There might be one out there. Show me if you have got one. Show me a different one. But um, we're using something basic. Container and a lid. That's all you need. So, what things can you add into your bin? Great question. Things we can use for carbon. So toilet rolls. I know they're valuable at the moment, but everyone, they're actually really good for compost. Your mail. So take out the little strips of plastic you can do the same thing with any bit of packaging that you're going to have from food. If it's paper, you can compost it. Now, the only thing I'd stay away from is glossy, waxy print. It actually has plastic inside. 
So avoid any plastic. Don't put any plastic in your compost. Uh, it won't decompose. Even the actual stickers on your apples don't even compost. That's a note for everyone. If you're one of those people who go, oh, you can eat your stickers, compost pile won't. Can you though? Can you? Put it in the comments. I'm interested. Now in your kitchen, nitrogen would be things like kitchen scraps. Anything that you chop up from your veggies, coffee grounds, if you have coffee, tea bags, as long as they haven't got plastic bits on them, chuck them in your bin. The only thing that you can't put into your bin is meat. Remember that guys, meat. That's the only thing I would say is exclude meat from your bin. And the reason is rats, mice, other critters, they'll be attracted to your compost pile and you'll have a lot more friends in the backyard, that's for sure. Probably not the best ones though. They're the ones that carry all the fun, diseases. Anyway, eggs are an exception. Exception, if you didn't catch that one. So don't put, uh, put eggs into the thing, but don't put meat into your bin. Now there's a few people out there who would say, oh no, you can't put everything in a compost bin. No, put onion, don't put citrus, don't put garlic. That's a no-no, because it changes the pH in your soil. Possibly, it does. But, unfortunately, um, for those people, I have some good news on that, and that's you can actually add anything you like. And the reason is, those microbes, which are gonna be in your soil, they will change the pH depending on what the plant needs. Now, there's a whole bunch on that. I won't go into all of that, but basically all you need to know is that the microbes are sorted out. Nature will sort it out. So, as long as you can grow it, as long as you can chop it, put it in your bin. That's my motto. So those are your nitrogen, that's your carbon material. Now for every bit of nitrogen, remember what nitrogen is? Vegetables and wet waste, right? Nitrogen, wet waste, all that. So for every bit of nitrogen material, you're gonna wanna add equal parts carbon. So we're cutting up a whole bunch of veggie scraps. We'll grab a whole handful of paper, tear those up into pieces and put them on top of whatever we put into the bin. And we're just gonna keep doing that every time we add something until you get right to the top. Now it's time to take it out. Time to take it for a little walk. And this is why you want your compost pile really close to your house. Because if it's over 10 metres away, you're not going to get up, take your bin out, pour it out. You're just going to sit inside and watch the old Netflix, aren't you? So make sure it's close to your house. So you're going to walk outside, go to your bin, open the lid, chuck it on top, compost done. And now, just your final step. We've got a whole bunch of old newspapers and what I want to do is just grab some sheets, a couple of sheets, and just put some more carbon in there with it. And that's just gonna make sure that this compost heap doesn't get anaerobic. What that means is that there's no oxygen getting into your compost heap and that will encourage bad bacteria to start growing into your compost. One, it actually stinks. Two, you won't be able to grow plants with that because plants like oxygenated feeding bacteria and fungi. So the whole idea of carbon is to make sure that your compost heap is gonna be encouraging all the goodies. They're gonna grow plants, make you food, and make you hell sexy so that's what we're here that's what we're actually about it's about making people sexy again 
why are you stuck at home? And that's what we're growing in here. That's what we're trying to do. So that's why we talked about air before. That's one of the elements that we need in the compost pile. And the other one is water, because if you've got dry surfaces, they can't really breed properly. So you want to make sure it's nice and moist for them. So every time that you add some dry carbon material, you just want to give a little soak with the hose. Or what I've done is actually set up a little retic inside and fed a little spray our head just on top here. And then that just runs once every morning. And that'll just make sure that your compost is decomposing a lot faster as well. Encourage the earthworms in from underneath. Lots of good stuff going on with um, keeping it moist. So you want your compost hole quite moist and that's all you need. So now I can set it, forget it, don't worry about it. Now once it gets full, what you want to do is close it off and let this one decompose. Now you want to wait for about four to six months and then this soil will be ready to go. And in the meantime, you'll just fill this one up and then you can have a constant supply of soil every six months. Now this does sound like a bit of a bummer because you can't use it straight away, but don't worry, in another video, we'll show you how you can actually grow soil in 18 days, a thousand liters of rich organic compost that will feed you for a whole year. So check that one out, it's coming out soon. That's your cold compost, all done, all sorted. So hopefully this video allows you to be able to start growing your microbes, start growing your soil at home, and you'll be growing food in no time. If you have any questions, please comment. We'll try and answer them best we can. And um, there's Matt Schick in the garden. Look at that. Yeah, loving it. So if you'd like to see more of this content, jump onto the website, dogsgowolf.com.au, and support us by donating so we can create more of this great content so you can learn more about how you can grow food from scratch just using nature. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Matchstick. Rawr, rawr, rawr. Where's the pumpkins? Where's the pumpkins? He hasn't learnt yet. But he will.